All right, Carl Walsh Mike recommended the ribs from Sam. They sell them in a three pack, uh, but since it's Independence Day, my Sam's actually had a rack and a half, which is perfect for my family. I typically would buy the three pack and save a rack and a half for later. But to prepare the ribs, I'm going to take them out and put them on a full pan and pat them dry with paper towels. So I'm going to flip them upside down and typically you start from the smaller end of the ribs and you can see that there's this really white membrane on here. I get it started with my fingernail. You can see I've got a little bit of it started right here. Then I take a piece of paper towel, you don't need a whole one, and that just helps you hold on to it and that membrane should just pull right off the ribs. The better the ribs, the easier the membrane is to pull off. So if you got some that the membrane's all ripped up on, you probably bought a, a cheaper pack of ribs, which is okay. Uh, they still smoke all right, it's just harder to get started on. And then I'll do the same thing for the full rack, and then we'll get them rubbed down. We're gonna start the rub process. And I use just regular yellow mustard, and Car Wash Mike's does recommend Dizzy Pig, but I'm going to use this Holy Cow, or sorry, Holy Gospel Barbecue Rub from Meat Church. I like the Meat Church rubs. I'm just going to put some mustard on the back side of these ribs. I'm bone side up right now. Give me a layer of mustard. The mustard does not change the flavor. It just helps the rub to stick. And then with my clean hand, I'm going to shake my rub. And I'm actually going to rub it in because Car Wash Mike says, don't be scared to rub a rub. Put it on pretty generously. Now I'm going to flip them over and repeat the process. If you rub them in, the rub won't fall off when you flip them over. So now clean hand again, back to my mustard. Now, I'm going to put these in the refrigerator for about an hour. Two hours top. I'm going to be smoking some ribs. And I have my Fogo charcoal in here. Notice how big the lumps are. Uh, I really like the Fogo brand. I'll leave a link in the description down below uh, to the Fogo website. I recommend the Super Premium. Also have some apple wood chunks here I'm going to be putting on for my smoke today. So I'm going to go ahead and get the lump lit. I just light right in the center and let it go from there. All right, so I have my lump lit right in the center and we're going to be following Car Wash Mike's recipe for ribs today. Uh, he is a competition cooker and also cooks at the car wash. So he claims to have cooked over 100 racks of ribs every year for 15 years. So over 1,500 racks of ribs. And he provided his recipe to the Big Green Egg Egghead Forum. And today we're going to follow it as closely as possible. So he recommends getting your lump lit and then putting about four chunks of some kind of fruit wood right in the center over the fire. Lump is lit and we're going to do the setup now just as Car Wash Mike recommends it. I'm going to do a plate setter, feet up. I'm going to put a ball of foil in the middle. He didn't recommend that in the notes, but I'm going to put that in the middle. That keeps it keeps the foil pan from sitting directly on the plate setter and uh, the, from the water or the liquid from evaporating too quickly. I'm going to fill this up with water and then add It'll be about uh, one part water to one part apple juice. So I'll pour a bottle of apple juice in here as well before we get started. And we'll go ahead and get started with that. And then I'm going to go ahead and set my grate on it. I only have a cast iron grate. So mine will be cooked atop of a cast iron grate. It really does not matter when you're smoking. But get my cast iron grate ready. And shut the grill and we are ready for the ribs to go on. Whenever they're ready, I'm going to clean off the grate just a little bit. Uh, but we're ready for the ribs to go directly on to the rib rack in just a little while. Once you get your egg dialed in at 200 or 225, 
it's time to put the ribs on. And we have our rib rack on here. I'm going to put the half rack in the very front. A whole rack behind that. I'm going to shut this down and we will see them in one hour. We will come back and we will spritz them with a apple juice and apple cider vinegar mix. So every hour on the hour we will spritz. You'll do that at hour one, two, three, and four. So four times we'll spritz one part apple cider vinegar, one part apple juice. At this one hour mark, uh, you can see what they look like. I'm gonna spritz them down. This will keep them nice and juicy and tender throughout the cook. Shut it back down for another hour. We're now at the three hour mark and this is what they're looking like. I'm going to go ahead and spray them first since I already have the spray bottle in my hand and then I'll give you a better look. This is how they look. You can see the bones or the meat starting to pull away from the bones a little bit. On those, this is a lot meatier rack that my brother bought. Um, it said extra heavy meat or something like that on the package. And we are going to shut this down. And at this point, at the three hour mark, you can bump it up to 250 safely. According to Car Wash Mike, the first two hours are the most crucial to keep it in the two to 225 range. Now we're gonna bump it up to 250 for another hour and then we'll check for doneness. We're now at the four hour mark and this is what they're looking like. See the meat starting to peel away from the bone a little bit. Um, more so on the edges where the heat's getting to them. We're looking for a little more pulling away than that so hopefully in the next 30 minutes we get some more progress because we are hungry and it is time to eat. We are at the four and a half hour mark now and they don't appear to be done because the meat is not pulling back off the bones but I am going to pull a rack off here and see if they are really flexible. You should be able to hold one end and the second end folds back over on it. And these are pretty flexible but since they're not pulled back off the bones yet we're going to go for about another 30 minutes. Then we're going to pull them off regardless because we're getting hungry and we're going to sauce them and see and make sure that uh, everybody gets fed tonight. Yeah, we're going to leave them on for a lot, about 30 more minutes. Alright, we are at about 4 hours and 45 minutes and the crew is hungry. So I'm going to go ahead and take the ribs off. We're going to sauce them up and we're going to put them back on for about 20 to 30 minutes to let the sauce cook in to the meat. They look and smell delicious. And the thing about ribs is they will still taste good. They just, you're cooking to the texture that you want. So while these might not be fully cooked and fall off the bone, they're still gonna taste really good. They are done. They're just not cooked as much as some people would like them to be. All right, so we have the ribs sauced. We removed the rib rack, and we're now putting them on bone side down with the sauce on them for about 20 to 30 minutes. Let me move this one over because that one's the longest. Get it in the middle. And in 20 or 30 minutes, the sauce will be nice and heat up. It'll heat it up and caramelize a little bit and make it nice and sticky. So these are as a sweet sauce, a sugar-based sauce, put on cold. And we'll let it set. We are running the temperature up to about 275 for this part of the process. All right. So our sauce is nice and heated up. You can even see it bubbling in some areas. We're gonna take these off and do some eating because we are hungry. The ribs turned out even better than I expected when we first pulled them off the grill. 
They were easy to bite off the bone, but weren't fall off the bone. And this is the texture that I prefer. Here's a photo of the cut of the ribs. You can see the light pink edges where the smoke ring is. The flavor was amazing. I'm glad I was able to pay tribute to Car Wash Mike's technique. If you have any questions, please post them in the comment section below. Give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as I plan to post more and more of my Big Green Egg cooks with my favorite recipes. Click one of the videos on the screen to see some of my other videos related to cooking with the Big Green Egg. I hope you guys have a great day.